Keensburg was the place to go to forget your troubles while cooling off in the water by the golden sandy beaches or strolling along the boardwalk or riding the jackrabbit, which was the roller coaster of its day, or swimming in one of many saltwater pools by the edge of Raritan Bay. And this is Keensburg today in the year 2017, and that's Raritan Bay, which surrounds part of the town. And instead of a multitude of hotels like the old days, there are now none to be found. There are a handful of restaurants, and Keensburg Amusement Park certainly brings people to the town, but not in the droves it once did. But Keensburg, like some towns on the Jersey Bay Shore, is beginning to come back, to be a place where people want to live, to work, and to play. And during the next few episodes of the story of Keensburg, we're going to focus on looking for evidence of the glory days, when the town must have seemed much like Disney World seems to us, a place of wonder, fun, and excitement, and even a little romance. So this is the continuing story of Keensburg, New Jersey. And we're going to start our journey to look for evidence from 1924, when Keensburg was much smaller, a population of less than 2,000 people. And the roads weren't all that good, but at least trains and steamships could make it here. But then in 1927, Route 36 was constructed, which allowed automobiles and buses to traverse the countryside to make their way to what many considered to be the land of plenty farms, inexpensive housing, entertainment, and of course the waterfront. It was a nice place to live. A boardwalk next to the waterfront was the mainstay of the center of entertainment in Keensburg, and so amusements, restaurants, and hotels began springing up near the boardwalk and the beaches. Roadways went from dirt to paved, and suddenly cars clogged the streets, motoring from here to there and there to here, And here's one of the gas stations at the corner of one of the major entrances to the town, Main Street and Route 36. You knew when you saw this magnificent castle, you were about to enter the kingdom of Kingsburg, a magical and unique community. And here's the same corner today, and it's still a gas station, but look closely at the photograph because something still remains from those days gone by. Now look at the house to the left and at the edge of the photograph. Let's now look again at the older photograph. You see it? It's still there. And this is just an example of what we're going to attempt during our program. We're going to try to visualize from the clues that remain just what the town must have looked like so many years ago. And also, on one of the corners of this intersection, folks who are from Keensburg fondly remember Robert Hall where they got their clothes. So let's continue our journey by driving west on Route 36 from this intersection. And we're looking south, and Route 36 is running east and west, and it wasn't always four lanes, it was two. And we're going to turn onto Monroe Avenue off of 36, which leads to Stone Road. And straight ahead, the road leads us through a marshy area created as a result of Waycake Creek, which we're going to cross over. And we're coming up on the bridge which crossed Stone Road where we enter Keensburg. And here's what it used to look like. Here's another shot which has been colorized to be a postcard. Yeah, they they had postcards for roads and buildings and trees, (laughs) department stores, you name it. From this shot, you can see how the creek meanders out to Raritan Bay. Now, many towns along the bay have creeks and marshes which flood and prevent building of any kind. Even roads crossing these creeks flood after a storm and have to be closed until the water drains. Now look at some of the water along the road in this shot and you'll see what I mean. And there are several roads in this area which cross the creek and every once in a while they have to be repaired or replaced such as this one which merges onto Stone Road and then into Church Street. And right near this particular intersection was Greenfield Dairy and Ice House. And I cannot overstate the importance of both. Remember, ice would help keep meat and other essential foods from going bad. And here is a very important location. It's where the train would stop to let passengers get on or get off. This pedestrian crosswalk was where the train tracks were located. But today, it's the Henry Hudson Hiking and Biking Trail. 
Now let's take a look at the same spot more than 100 years ago. Do you see the railroad tracks in the lower left portion of the photo crossing over the road? That's Church Street. Here's another view down Church Street toward Carr Avenue with the train station out of frame on the right. But can you also see the real estate office? Oh, there were several of those real estate offices which were selling land and homes to those who stepped off the train for a visit. And here's approximately the same view today and the train tracks cross the road here and went in that direction, which again is now a public trail, which is operated by the Monmouth County Park System. And right where the path enters Church Street, you can still see the concrete pedestal where the railroad crossing barrier would come down to warn and stop cars from, a, from the approaching train, which was headed this way, sometimes to the station, located right here. And here's what it looked like back in the day. Take a look at this. Today, this area was overtaken by a modern business, which is also located next to the trail where the train tracks would continue east. And this gazebo and parking lot is where the train station was located with Church Street running left and right in the distance. And here's one of the trains with its passenger cars which stopped in Kingsburg. Again, imagine the train tracks. There was a pair of tracks actually, one headed east and one headed west. And it would all happen right here. Look at that dog on the left. And then look at the signalman in the white pants on the right. And quite near to the train station were also trolleys, which ran through some of the major streets of Keensburg. Hard to believe, right? Trolleys were quite common back in the old days, and the tracks would often run right down the middle of the streets, and people in automobiles would have to watch out for them. Trolleys were considered to be mass transportation of the day, so to speak. And this building, I believe, was Grimm's Bazaar, which is right next to a local bar today. But it's not called Grimm's Bazaar anymore. Across the way, and once located on Church Street, was the first post office. And sometimes, when looking at photographs, it's important to try and find a structural or architectural element which is similar, because very often the same building can be modified severely and may no longer be recognizable except for small design elements as seen in this short series of photographs. And here's a building from 1925 which still stands today. It's where Anthony's is located on the north side of Church Street. So here we are on Church Street headed east toward Carr and Main Street. Here's an old photograph of Church Street, but quite frankly, I couldn't seem to locate any of these buildings or where they once stood. But there is a clue, however, which you can see in the photograph. It's the American flag on a pole on the left side of the street. And here's what I think. The first grammar school was built on the corner of Myrtle and Church, and it had a flagpole in front of it. Not many buildings had flagpoles. So these buildings are probably west of the school on the northern side of Church Street, right about here on the left where we're driving today. And this building today on the corner of Myrtle and Church is where the school stood. So let's take a look side by side before it was torn down. That's the grammar school with the flagpole on the left. And here are a few more shots of the old school. Eventually, another school was built and the local government moved into the old school building for a while until it was eventually torn down and a residential building was built in its place. So let's pass where the old school was located and pause to take a look at an early photograph of Church Street along with a word of warning. And here it is. Historical photographs are obtainable through a number of people and organizations, and I also have my share of them. But people who identify and then label their photographs for the historical record are not always correct in their identification of the photograph. That's why I always take the labels on photos with a grain of salt. And I'm suspicious because I've seen similar photographs of other streets with similar looking trees. Now, streets could have similar looking trees, but 
Who knows? So it may very well be Church Street, but I think it's even safer to say it's an early look at Keensburg, and that in and of itself is good to know. And this photograph is definitely Church Street because I recognize certain things from other photographs which make it very credible. One thing I can say with certainty, this is Church Street today. <laughs> and we're approaching Carr Avenue. And we're going to look at Carr Avenue in another episode because Carr Avenue in and of itself is a story. Now Main Street is a block away in the distance. And to our right is a building which seems to keep changing before our eyes. Here at the corner of Church and Carr is a business no longer located here. In fact, the building today is being renovated. Long ago, it housed a number of businesses, such as Keedsburg National Bank. And as long as we're here, let's look in on Police Chief McGuire as he inspects Keensburg's finest during 1930 in front of the same building, Keensburg National Bank. Now, I was tempted to dub in my own dialogue here as the chief did his inspection, such as, all right, I know this is challenging, but try to look professional. Oh, come on, guys, it's almost over. But when push comes to shove, these guys are serious about their business. Hey, it's a moving picture, not a still photo, guys. So again, the police are in front of the original building of the bank before the bank moved diagonally across the street to its new location. And look, uh, there, there were even postcards of the bank. What did I tell you? And you see the policeman on the corner and the bicycle as well. And here's what it looks like today where the borough of Kingsburg's local government is housed. But let's go back in time and let's go inside the building and do some banking, okay? I hear a couple of local kids opening a new account. And while they do, let's take a look at some employees at work. Again, this is circa 1930. This was shot in 1930. And, and we, we'd know the exact date if we could just freeze this shot and zoom in on the date blocks below. Yeah, see, it's hard. If it was a little clearer, it's not bad for a film from 1930, but if we could if we could zoom in, you'd see it. Well, it looks like they successfully opened up a new account and will now be on their way to saving for their live stream, whatever it is, maybe buying a house in Kingsburg. Again, the visual shock of today's reality. We're back across the street from today's bank or the building of today is the remnants of a gasoline station. And there it is. I think. <laughs> Cute, ain't it? And here's a view from the latest Borough Town Hall. Now, the bank is long gone, but here's one more look at Church Street heading west with the bank, or at least a sliver of it, on our right. And our final look back into the more recent past, Decoration Day in Kingsburg, and the annual parade. And you saw this aerial shot before with the bank located right here, but you didn't necessarily see the First Methodist Church located right about here on Church Street. It was at one time the church of Reverend William Ramsey, who is pictured here and is considered to be the father of Keensburg for a number of reasons, which we explained in previous episodes. This original church was torn down and replaced by this one, the First United Methodist Church. And today, right behind it, is the temporary home of the Keensburg Police Department, which will be moving in 2018 to their new location on Carr Avenue. Now, some buildings and businesses have been part of the community for some time, such as this one. And here we are on Main Street, looking at Church Street as it heads west. And at the very end on the left would have been the old train station. And here's a slightly different view, looking in the same direction, except let's turn the camera toward Main Street and then look at an old photograph of a business which stood at this corner. And this is Fallon Manor, also at the corner of Main and Church. And here's Main Street, looking again north. East. And then south, which is where we'll now head as we drive a little bit on Main Street. 
Here's the corner of Port Monmouth Road in Main Street, and the businesses located in this building seem to change constantly. We're going to look north on Main Street, the Dixie Lee Bakery, another longtime business in the community. And here's the local drugstore, which recently had something beautiful painted on its outside wall. So let's just take a drive on Main Street and just generally take a look at what appears to be some of the older structures and where we can identify them for certain, let's do it. Here we are crossing uh, Church Street to our left. So let's stop here for a moment to look at some old photographs of Main Street. Here's the first one. We're looking south on Main Street and look at that tent off to the left. Now if you didn't stay in a hotel or a boarding house, you may have stayed in a tent within a campground area and we're going to look at some of those campgrounds later. And I love this photograph. It looks like an oil painting. And maybe it is. It's hard to tell. This is Main Street. And look at the sky and the way the light falls on the trees and the well-dressed couple in the road. It's simply beautiful. It's my favorite image of Kingsburg. To me, the picture expresses the romanticism and innocence of a time gone by. Here's Main Street again with presumably Church Street on the right. We're looking south. So we're headed north on Main Street again, but look at the old two-story building on the left. Here's a better shot. This building has contained a number of businesses over the years, like tattoo parlors and such, but most people will remember it historically as Kumasaka's department store. And again, no surprise, it's pictured in a postcard. And can you see where Main Street curves to the left up ahead? Well, here's basically the same view today, and here is a shot looking backward toward the south with the building on the right. Now, every time we look back, I'm gonna tell you we're looking in our rear view mirror, and it's gonna look like a rear view mirror so you don't get too confused. So anytime you see a picture in this frame, it's looking backwards. Anyway, today this building is Mr. G's Furniture. Here are two buildings separated by an empty space. I, I don't know what was there. I'm, maybe you know, I don't. And here we are at Manning and Maine, and there's Kingsburg Fire Company number one in the distance. And here's a tribute to Dougie Folks, who recently passed away, but is so much a part of the town's history. And there's the Kingsburg Post Office on the right. Here's Main Street north from Francis Place during about 1950. Also at Main and Francis is Friendship Park across the street from the firehouse. And this old house, I just like this old house, is on the same block as the fire station and also across the street from the park. And here is Brendel's Deli, uh, or delicatessen if you will, at the corner of Francis and Main, but it no longer stands. Here's the northwest corner of Francis Place and this park, and over there next to the park was a large hotel called McDonald's Hotel. Let's now look at a couple of old photographs of McDonald's Hotel with its famous flamingo bar inside. And in the back of the hotel was a very nice garden which visitors could stroll through. And while the hotel was a number of blocks from the beach and the boardwalk and where all the action was, it was right on the main drag with lots to do and a little more quiet than other hotels near the major amusements by the beach. And this is the mayor back in the day who was outside the hotel when it was burning one time. And here's a more recent shot, a part of the hotel in winter with Main Street in the background. And back to the present where we're slowly but surely heading toward the beach area. And this might be a good place to stop and take a look at where we are actually located. So we're above Friendship Park, 
at Maine and Francis Place, and Raritan Bay is in the distance. But at the bottom of the video is a roof where part of the McDonald's Hotel would have been located. And you can see Main Street running up and down, or north and south to be more specific. And that bit of green coming into view at the bottom is Friendship Park with Francis Place next to it. And now we're looking toward the east with Port Monmouth, Belford, and Atlantic Highlands off in the distance. And there's the firehouse we saw earlier at the bottom of the screen. And those two taller buildings are at the corner of Main and Church Street. And if we keep following Main Street south, we're gonna end up at Route 36 where we generally started this journey in this particular segment. And the tall building over to the right is the location of the original grammar school located at Church and Myrtle. Do you remember? And now back to Main Street level. And I usually bring photographs to compare with today's structures, but this is supposed to be 204 Main Street, but it doesn't look much like 204 Main Street in the photo. So the facade could have been changed, or the address is wrong, or the original building was torn down and a new one built. And here's a shot looking back in our rear view mirror. So let's keep moving north. And let's take a look at an old photo, which appears to be the same block on Main Street. And do you see that two-story building just on the other side of the little blue building? Let's look for it in the next older photograph of the same block. There it is. Do you see it? And then there's this building, which I had to ask folks to identify in the Keensburg, New Jersey Facebook group, and they did just that. And here's an older photo of the building with the name Charles Comar and Sons. Here's Carlos Drive, which is the dead end. Here's a dead end off Main Street. And here's the next bend in the road of Main Street, looking forward and then looking back. And here's an old photograph, which folks can't seem to identify for me beyond what the photo reads. It says Main Street showing Keensburg Auditorium. You know, after a while, a lot of these old buildings start to look very similar. And coming up on the left, check out that reddish brick building. It's the telephone exchange in 1930. You see the official telephone company flag? And here's the building today. And this is looking back at the building from a little further up on Main Street. And the Bayshore Senior Center in Keensburg is on the left where we have stopped. And here's a closer look once again at that building today. And here's the Viking House at 109 Main Street, which is nearby the red brick building. And looking back, there's the Viking House on the right side of our view. And at Locust, behind us, right on Main Street, here's another empty lot. And here's today's sewage disposal plant located next to the Senior Center, but across from the Viking House. Now, I'm not sure where the plant was previously, but here's some film of it in 1930. And here's the water plant from the same period, but again, just not sure where it was located. Well, we're getting to the end of our journey. Got a few minutes left, and uh, we're going to continue our journey in the next episode. But in the meantime, look at this little place at Forest in Maine. Now, somebody lived here, I think. And look at that house to the left of it, because we're going to see it in an older photograph. And here's the house we saw earlier next to the little house. It must have been Flag Day or some other patriotic holiday. And now look at it today. And this, again, is the little house. Now just take a quick look at some of the houses up here closer to the beach. Here's one at the corner of Sealy and Maine. Here's something I found at Maine and Collins. And here's an old photo of it, but it's hard to make out what it was. 
And here's something called the Row Cottage across the street. And here are a few more random shots of this particular area. And I'm told this area was a happening place once upon a time. Up there, straight ahead, is the beach. Some of this art is being uh, produced and seen all over Keensburg lately as a way to beautify the town, and I'm telling you, it all looks great, if you ask me. Now look carefully, because you're about to see a helicopter fly by the beach up ahead. There it is. Do you see it? Let's look back one more time in our rearview mirror. And we're going to end this episode with a visit to the end of Main Street, which back in the day was called Morris Park. Morris's Beach, Morris Pavilion, and sometimes simply Main Street Beach. Here's an old photograph looking back on Main Street. And incidentally, there were lots of camps along the beach, such as Camp Restawile, Camp Cornell, and many others which we're going to visit in upcoming episodes. But for now, let's just take a break and enjoy the area as it once was. And next time in uh, the next episode, we're going to cruise along Beachway and past the hotels toward the boardwalk and the rides and the music and the people enjoying themselves like never before. That's all next time on Jersey Bayshore Country. So long, folks. Hope you enjoyed it.